Are you all ready for the word of God? Open up your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 26. Today I want to talk about God being big, great, and abundant. Say that with me. Big, great, abundant God. I, I kind of feel like, like I'm, I'm, I, want, I want to sell a car to you today. It's kind of like, it, oh, this car, it's big. It's great. It's abundant. Come now. I kind of feel, I, I feel like I want to explain God in a, in a way that's so enorm, enormous, so big, so grand, so powerful that, you know, our words cannot really give him justice on how big and how great and how abundant our God is. God is not a poor God. He's not a poverty God. And God is a God that wants to put his blessings upon you to show you that he's big, that he's great, and that he's abundant. Amen. Poverty is not the way for the believer. When you serve God, who's big, great, abundant, and he's your father, he takes you to a place of prosperity. Bible says that Jesus, though he was rich, yet he became poor so that we might become rich. Rich means that you always have in all seasons. When you, are, when you desire to do something or you desire to give something and you do not have, that's a, that's a sign of poverty. But God wants to take you to a place of prosperity that you always have more than enough. Amen. Even when it comes to the life of God, Jesus said that the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I have come so that you might have a life and a, a life in abundance. Amen. Not life marginal. Not life just a little bit. But so much life that you have life to give to others. Amen. When you walk into a place, you should have so much joy and so much peace that you should leave some for those who don't have what you got. The situation should change just because you walked into a place. You should be able to, to change that situation because you, you showed up with the abundance of God. Amen. And this is in every, every area. God wants to bless you spiritually, physically, socially, mentally, and financially. Amen. In every area, we serve an abundant God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, my God is rich. And if, if your God is rich, that means you are rich because God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so in every area, you have to begin to change your mind from seeing yourself as poor to seeing yourself blessed, to seeing yourself prosperous. You might say, Pastor, you don't know my situation. You don't know all the debts I have. You don't know the place I work. You don't know the money that I don't have. It doesn't matter about what your situation is. Only thing that matters is who he is and what he has available for you. And if you will step into it by faith, you will see the abundance and blessings of God. That's why I want to preach this to you because I'm tired of the news talking about the Rio Grande Valley being one of the poorest areas of this world. I curse that. I break that in the name of Jesus. This valley shall be blessed by God in Jesus' name. And it's going to take the word of God, the truth of the word of God, and some people who are radical enough to believe God and walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care if your shoes are, are, are broken, if, if your car is busted, if, if everything around you looks like poverty. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Begin to do it his ways and watch what God will do. God is looking for someone that he can show them so strong in their life. And I believe that's you today. Amen. Today you're coming out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke poverty off your life in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. That's why the Bible says that he became, he who was poor became, who was rich became poor so that we might become rich. Why did they have to put that little word might? Because that might is, is, is it's, it's pointed at you. It's saying, do you have faith enough to believe this scripture that you will become rich? And so I want to show you. I want to show you these secrets. Now you can get angry and you can, get, you can put all your guards up and say, there he goes again, talking about, about giving, talking about, you can put all that, then this blessing's not for you, brother. 
It's not for you, sister. It, it's, it's for those that, that, are, that will believe God's word, not those that want to reject God's word. Amen. I'm not here to preach Kevin's opinion. I'm here to preach the word of God to you. Amen. If you receive the word of God, your situation will change. Your life will change. But if you reject the word of God, you get to stay wherever you are at. And you become your own God. And to, to tell you the truth, whoever is their own God is a fool. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, my God is big. My God is great. And he's abundant. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want, I want to show you some things. And I, I, I'm going to need you guys to dream a little bit with me today. In Genesis 26, beginning in verse 1, it says, Now there was a famine in the land. Go to verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Everybody say a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. That is my, prof that is my, my desire, my faith, and I, pros I prophesy over you that you will prosper and continue to prosper until you become very prosperous in Jesus' name. Verse 14. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Verse 16. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Amen. I want to talk to you about the hundredfold blessing, because you got to understand this hundredfold blessing here. Because the Bible says in verse 12, then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped the same year a hundredfold. Everybody say a hundredfold. Now, when you ask people what is a hundredfold, they say it's multiplication. So you sow one, you get a hundredfold. But that it's not multiplication. It's a hundredfold. Where one becomes two. That's the first fold. And then the second fold, two, becomes four. And then the third fold is, is, is four, becomes eight. And eight becomes 16. And 16 becomes 32. A hundredfold, amen. Now, I, I don't know if I, if I have these notes. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Because this blew my mind, amen. <laughs> because I want you to see what... what if, if you were to take one, now, now I know, how many of you are really good at math? Let me see your hands. There's like three. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not one of you. <laughs> but I'm going to show you my basic math here. Okay. If you take one and you do, and you fold it ten times, it's called a fold change, and do a fold change ten times, it becomes 1,024. That's just 10. If you do it, if you fold one 20 times, it becomes 1,048,576. That's just 20. You fold it 30 times, it becomes 1,073,741,824. That's 30 times. That's only 30. I'm talking about one folded 30 times. And if you were folded 40 times, how many want to hear 40 times? 40 times, 1 trillion, 99 billion, 511 million, 627,776. That's only 40 times. If you were to do 50 times, how many want to hear 50 times? If you were to take one and fold it 50 times, I broke my calculator. It's, it's, some, it's a number that has like 17 zeros or more. And so the reason why I want to tell you about that, because it's not that every one you could calculate it to be this amount. It's that God's blessings are greater than you can ask, think, or imagine, or count. If you were just to have, if you were just to have a 40, a 50, 
uh, fold blessing of one, the entire national debt of the United States will be wiped out. Amen. The word of God says that, that he sowed in famine and God gave him a hundredfold harvest. That is such a harvest that it destroyed the famine. It's such a harvest that the wealth of the land and the nation was transferred, transferred to him. It was, a, it was a, a blessing, a harvest that he began so much that the king begged him to leave because he had already plundered everything that they had because he had the answer to the famine, which is the blessing of the Lord. I believe that harvest time is coming your way, that you're going to wipe out debts, you're going to wipe out poverty, you're going to wipe out all the, the, the poverty of this land, and that you will be a source of God's blessing in the Rio Grande Valley. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. See, that is the blessing of God. The blessing of God is not just about what you could get for your house. The blessing of God is when God can put his blessing so that you can bless others. The word of God says that through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. People should be coming to you to borrow from you. People should be looking at you and say, that is a person that I need in my life because they have something that I don't have. They should be looking at you as, that's a person that will be a blessing to me. Instead of running to, the, to, to these, these loan sharks and these pond places and, and these places that are, that are destroying their future, they should be able to see a man or woman of God and say, hey, listen, I don't know how you got that, but please teach me how to get there so that you could teach them the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Because that's what wealth does. Wealth, wealth will speed you up and wealth will, will buy you influence. Amen? They will listen to you when you got something in your pocket, amen? Hallelujah. And so that blessing of a hundredfold came on Isaac as he sowed it, amen? As he sowed it, even though, think about it, he sowed in a famine. I mean, how many, how many of you ever, how many you grow stuff? Any farmers here? Anybody plant some things? About as many mathematicians as they are farmers in this place. But as you, as, you, as you farm, you don't sow into sand. You don't sow into dead land. You have to get that soil ready to receive the seed that you're going to sow into, and then you sow that seed. But God told, told Isaac, he said, hey, sow into the famine. Sow into that dead ground. Sow into that ground that looks like there's no life because I'm going to show you something that, you, that this world hasn't seen before. And so Isaac obeyed the word of the Lord, he sowed into the land, and he reaped a harvest that was so great that the people begged him to leave. Amen. This hundredfold blessing is available for everybody. And I'm not talking about an exact number. I'm talking about a blessing that's beyond your imagination. Amen. Say a blessing beyond my imagination. Amen. You know, just because you don't see it in the physical doesn't mean that God hasn't released it upon your life. Because you could, you could make withdrawals by faith. You store up your treasures in heaven, but you can make withdrawals by faith. That whenever you have a need, God supernaturally provides for you. Even the needs that you don't even know about, the things that you're going to face tomorrow, God will supernaturally draw. It will be available for you so you can supernaturally draw it by faith. Amen. Everybody say by faith. When, when I... Uh, I was going through a time where I was seeking God. I need to know God. I need to hear from God. I knew that there was more that the Lord had for me, but I wasn't hungry enough for the things of God. And so even though I was coming to church and I was a, 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 a so-called good Christian, I gave my tithe and, and, and I did my duty. I wasn't someone that God had fully uh, taken over my life. I had surrendered complete to God. I still had these things that it was like, God, you can have me on Sunday and any time that, that, that you kind of need me, but the rest of the time it's myself. And so there's two lives. It's like living, you know, one foot in, one foot out. 
I was speaking to this young lady. She said, I want to go to church, but, but I just feel so guilty because I have like one foot in and one foot out. I said, just keep that foot in. You'll see that God will pull you all the way. <laughs> He'll pull you all the way. Just keep on coming, amen. Just keep on coming and watch what God will do, amen. Hallelujah. And so I had my one foot in and one foot out, and I knew there was more. And I finally got to a place where, where, where I began to cry out to God and say, God, I need to hear your voice. God, I want you to speak to me. God, I want to, I want to know you just like I hear about the, when the pastor preaches on how good you are. But God, I want to hear your voice that, that I know that it's you. I need you, God. I want, I'm so hungry. I'm desperate for you. I was crying out to God. And I didn't know how to get there. I knew I was saved, but I didn't know how to go to that abundant life, that, that life where God was work, walking with me and talking with me. And I was in constant fellowship with him. And that he could use me to be a minister and help others. I began to cry out to God. And so I was at church doing my religious duty, minding my own business, and I was sitting in the back of the church. Good, faithful Christian. And God began to speak to me. He said, give your car. God, I didn't ask to give my car. My prayers wasn't tell me to give my car. My prayers, I wanted to hear your voice. My prayer was, was I need to know you. My prayer was, I want to, I want to, I want to, I'm desperate for you, God. But God gave me his word, give your car. You know, some of us want to hear, hear God in our own way. Some of us say, when, oh, God, tell, talk to me about who's going to give to me. Talk to me about how, how others are going to bless me. Talk to me how others are going to come around me, me and tell me how holy I am. I mean, it's like we have this imagination, like, like this, the things of the world, because the world wants the glory for themselves. So the world are like, come look at what I got. Come see what I got. Come see what I wear. Come see where I live. Come see what I drive. The world is always trying to cover themselves with gold and silver so that people say, oh, look at that person. But if you really look at the person, you won't like what you see. God told me, he said, give your car. I had just paid off my car. It's funny how God didn't tell me to give my car when I was still paying it. Because I didn't own it. But I had just paid it off. I owned it. And I looked at my wife and I said, I said, honey, God's speaking to me about giving my car. And she said, go. So in the middle of service, I got out of the, the, the aisle and I came to the front. And I gave my car to the Lord. I felt God's presence. That one offering of me giving my car, you know, the, the beautiful thing was not that I gave my car. The beautiful thing was that I know that God spoke to me and that I was obedient. There's something about obedience that gives birth to blessings, amen. You know, there are a lot of people who say, God, speak to me. But when God speaks to you, they don't want to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. You know, and, and to tell you the truth, where, where, without obedience to the voice of God, you will never experience the revival that you're looking for and the change that you desire in your life. Obedience gives birth to the blessings, and God will speak to you about giving because if you could be faithful in the giving, it's a laying down of your life every single time, not just one moment, not just one time, but it's constant. And God wants to break you free from living for yourself to start living for him where you can look at the things and say, this doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. If I don't have you. Amen. Because whom you love, you will give. Amen. Who you love, you will give. If you love your family, you're going to give to your family. Well, if you love your God, you're going to give to your God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I gave my car. And after I gave my car, the Lord began to open up so much incredible blessing. His anointing started coming upon me. His word started to come alive in, inside of me. I started to, 
find myself speaking about him wherever I went. I, people began to bless me. I got, a, I got a new car paid in full that was worth double the amount uh, of the car that I gave. God opened up a door for me to serve in a ministry that when I went, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I came back with the fire of God to this church, and I began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I cannot, I can count how, how much, that car must have been worth about eight to $10,000, but I cannot count the amount of blessings that God has put upon my life since I gave it. That God put an anointing upon me to pray for the sick and see them healed. God gave me a word to speak salvation into the lost. God has sent me and used me mightily for his glory. All because of one obedience to a seed that was sown. Your offerings will change your life. If I were to say I received a hundredfold return, what I receive is greater than a hundredfold return. Not only do I know my God, but I'm able to make him known to others. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are an instrument of God's mercy. Through relationships with him, the blessing of heaven are made available to minister to this world. I want to tell you, God has a lot invested in you. He has his, the blood of Jesus Christ invested in you. And how many of you are breathing today? That means he has a future for you, a destiny for you. If you think that you are living just so that you can have a good job and be happy at home, you are wrong. God has, a, the Bible says that he gives us the ministry of reconciliation. And let me just tell you, some people are working to retire. There is no retirement in God. Retirement means to go home to heaven. If you are retired, get some new tires and keep going another 100,000 miles, 100, miles. There is no retirement. As long as you are breathing, you are serving the Lord. You are not called to work a job. You're called to serve a king. And if that job doesn't match up with your, with your purpose and your destiny, it, you're going to watch how God will cut you off from that area so he can put you in a place so you can serve him. But in your job, you serve the Lord. In your home, you serve the Lord. In everything you do, you serve the Lord. We serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the Bible talks about how he wants to, he, he uses us. He uses us that he has a hope and a purpose and a destiny for us. Amen. And so it is your sowing that releases God's blessings. God gives you opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. He gives you opportunity, but it's your sowing that releases the blessings. If you are not obedient to sowing, no, no seed, no harvest. Faith causes you to move. Some of you are believing God for things, but you haven't sown any seed to get there or to receive it. You sow to where you want to go. If you're believing God for a new car, begin to sow for that new car. Give seed. Believing God is going to provide for you. If you're believing God for your, your husband to be saved or your family to be saved, give seed, believing that God will reach, reach down with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're believing God for a promotion increase. So, tell your neighbor, so. Hit them and say, so. Hallelujah. If they hit you too hard, you sit next to the wrong person. You sow where you want to go, Amen. You have to understand, I'm talking about another kingdom. I'm not talking about the kingdoms of this world. The kingdoms of the world says take from them, convince them to give to you. But the kingdom of heaven says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall man put into your bosom. I'm talking about another kingdom. Like you know, some people, they'll, they'll get angry at this word. Why do you have to talk about this stuff? Why can't you be just like those poor people that talk about God and say a little prayer and just let you go the same way you, you, you came? I love you too much not to preach this word. Pastor, pray for me. I'm just, uh, I'm facing so much poverty. I could pray for you, but it's really your life that needs to change. Begin to sow. Everybody say sow. Luke 6, 38 says give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You have to give to receive. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. 
Someone says, well, well, pastor, doesn't, can't God make it a little easier? Look, he made it as easy as can be. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be the gift that you receive so you, you have eternal life. Amen. Let me thank God for, for Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But now he wants you to walk an abundant life so that when you sow in faith, it releases the blessings of the kingdom of heaven upon your life. That the things that are in the spirit will be made known to you in the flesh. Amen. And so you sow. Sometimes sowing is, is speaking a word. Sometimes sowing is, is giving up something that God requires from you. Some of you, there are, there are cars that are waiting for you, but you, don't, you will not sow what it need, what's needed to get there. Promotion that's waiting for you, but you have no faith that your seed can produce a harvest for you. You need to put your faith in the word of God and in the, the act of sowing in that seed. If you have a need, there's a seed that's there available because the Bible says that it gives seed to the sower. Stop trying to find out how to take care of your needs. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God wants to add unto you, but he, he requires of you following him, obeying him, and sowing, sowing, sowing. Everybody say sow. Shout it louder, sow. Because, see, sowing is your part. He is the Lord of the harvest. He's the one that takes that one and turns it into trillions. He's the one that has the hundredfold blessing, amen. And so if you can sow, you can step into that faith. You can, you, you're saying that I have, you have faith to receive. Some of you are believing God to be out of debt. When was the last time you went before God and said, Father, I'm bringing this seed to you and I'm calling this seed the complete deliverance of my family from debt in Jesus' name. And then you come and you bring it to God and you honor God. Maybe you're dealing with a, a, a sickness that just seems not to go. The Bible says he gives you power to prosper. How does God give you power to prosper? Seed time, harvest. The Bible says as long as the earth exists, there will always be seed time and harvest. If you could come before God with that seed for that thing that you desire. You know, I, I like to say it this way. Give God no excuse not to bless you. That you know that you went before God and you gave the seed in faith to receive what you desired. Then you could stand and say, Father, I thank you that you've heard my prayer and I thank you that the blessing's on its way. But if you are just saying, I want God to bless me, I want God to help me, I want God to do this in my life, but you are not willing to sow a seed, if it doesn't move you, it will not move God. I think I'm preaching a lot better than what you're receiving today. If it does not move you, it will not move God. Amen. Instead of complaining about the problems, do something about it. Rise up and sow a seed. And keep sowing and keep sowing and watch what God will do. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving changes your future. You sow seed today and you reap a harvest tomorrow. Amen? What seed do you need to give to produce the harvest you desire? I know this, this, this. I know a lot of times we come up here and say, God wants to do this. God wants to do that. God wants to do this. And that's true. The word of God is true. He's a healer. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's a restorer. But, you know, one of the things the Bible talks about is sowing, in sowing is giving your tithes and offerings. And, and one of the things it says in Malachi chapter 3, and I want you to hear this. It says, will a man rob God? Say that with me. Will a man rob God? One more one more time, will a man rob God? I think one of the worst things as a father is wanting to bless your children, but you can't bless them. When we don't sow and give in our tithes and offerings and sow in special seats for the things that we desire, we are robbing God, his desire to bless you. 
He wants to show you his glory. He wants to show you his goodness. He wants to show you how you don't have to serve things of this world, but you can serve the king of kings and be blessed in heaven and in on earth. Some of you need to get start getting angry and looking at if, if you if you if you're not if your house is not what you desire, or your car is not, or your clothes are not, some of you need to get angry and begin to do something about it. I'm going to do something about it. I don't need to steal to get it. All I need to do is honor God, and I'm going to give to get it. Father, I'm coming to you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to test your word out today. I'm going to give because I am in need. So I'm not going to be a person that's going to look at that offering as something that is just a waste of time. But that's my way out. That's not my open door. I'm going to give for what I need. This year, I'm going to be debt free. This year, my family's going to go on vacation. This year, my bills are going to be paid in full in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich and adds no sorrow. Amen. And so I, 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 I speak this word over you today. Because I believe that God's going to use you to bless this land, this Rio Grande Valley. I believe that there are business people that are not in business today because you saw that you could not do it because you looked at your money and you said there's no way. But I am challenging you to put your faith in God because through you, you're going to give biz you're going to give jobs to people. You're going to be a blessing into this community and the gospel will be preached because of the prosperity that flow through your hands. Amen. Amen. I still hold on to that word that, that, that God gave, gave me and Veronica. I remember one time I was at, at church in, in Florida, and, and the pastor, he laid hands on me. He says, I see gold coming into your hands. And then he spoke to my wife, and he, he says, I see millions flowing through your hands. I don't, I don't see myself buying a lot of stuff for me. I mean, those things, they don't add joy. You know what adds joy to my life? Jesus and Veronica. I already got everything I need. But I see us spending money so the gospel could be preached. So that people's lives could be changed. So that what God has done for me, God can do it for others. Freely we receive, freely we give. And so your prosperity is a must in the kingdom of God. Because God has your heart. And wherever has, whatever has your heart, you will give to. Amen. And so I want you to begin to believe God for more, amen. You might say, well, pastor, me and my family are comfortable. Start getting uncomfortable, amen. Start asking God for more. Start asking God for greater blessings upon your life because the gospel needs to be preached. We only have so many years to live. It doesn't matter what, it, listen, we're going to take our inheritance to heaven and through the souls that, that we lead to, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, amen. And so lift up your hands, church. Father, I thank you. That your blessing is coming upon your people like never before. Lord, that they will see your abundance. They'll see your glory. They'll see your power, Father God. And they will not limit you ever again in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you will speak to them about their giving, that about their sowing, that they will sow the right seeds to produce the right harvest for their life, Father God. Lord, that you will put, you will put godly desires inside of them. That they will see themselves as a blessing to the nations and that the curse of poverty will be forever broken off this real Grandy Valley, that through these people, mighty men of valor, mighty women of valor will rise up and there will be people that will be blessing, that will bless cities and bless nations in Jesus' mighty name. That there will be job, job creators in Jesus' mighty name. And that your gospel will be fully preached to the farthest parts of the, of the world. I thank you, Father God, that your word is so strong and so true. And we just receive that blessing upon our life. Now, Father, I ask you to speak to them about the seed that they must sow today and the seeds that they will sow tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Can we give God praise, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah.